guys! I'm Anne and welcome back to my channel. Here at Chronically Beautiful we are trying to live our best life even though we probably don't feel like it. And my family is getting ready to go on a big trip for a baseball tournament for my son and we're really excited to be headed down to Myrtle Beach. And so I am deep in packing mode right now and I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to do a couple of videos about travel. These are what work for me. I am someone who suffers from a few different chronic illnesses, but I am very, very blessed to be functional in my life. I work full time, I manage my house, I cook and clean, I do all of those things, but I, I really struggle in a lot of ways. And for me, managing my illnesses are the number one way that I can stay moving and, and keep my life moving the way that it has to. So this is a list that works for someone that is functionally chronically ill. Um, I don't deal with a feeding tube. I'm not hospitalized. Um, I, I don't deal with a, a walker or a wheelchair or any of those things. I am a very, very blessed and lucky spoonie as we're called. So these are my top 10 essentials for dealing with a functional chronic illness while you are traveling. So let's dive right in. The first thing you want to make sure you do when you're packing is bring everything that you normally use in your everyday routine. If you use a certain kind of shampoo because it's what works for you, if you use a certain type of toothpaste because you deal with pain in your teeth, if you use a neti pot every day, all of those types of things, then I mean, duh, but Sometimes when you're packing for a trip, you think, oh, I'll just use the hotel soap or I'll just whatever. Now, when you're dealing with different chronic illnesses or just life in general, you might have sensitive skin, you might have sensitive teeth, you might have some issues that really require you to have all of your stuff. So first things first, be okay with taking a little more stuff because it's what you need to make things happen. If you're flying somewhere, we're taking a road trip, but if you're flying somewhere and you can't take every little thing you own, make sure that you, you know, call ahead, make sure there's a store where you can buy all the stuff you need. Heck, even pack a little bag and ship it and have it meet you there. I don't care. Whatever it takes, you got to make sure you have the stuff that you need. So I'm not going to be listing all the separate things that are part of my everyday routine, but just make sure that you're not scrimping on the stuff that you usually use. If you use a certain kind of moisturizer, because that's what doesn't make you break out, then pack that. Don't just grab a travel size because it's cute and they have that little section at Target. Welcome to t -t 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 Target! <laughs> and you wanted to buy some things there. Take the stuff that you need. Go to the Dollar Tree and buy a little pack of clear bottles and you can put your own stuff in there. Squeeze it out of the thing that you have in your shower. So no need to go waste a bunch of money buying little travel sizes of things, especially when they're going to make you itchy or they're not going to work well for you. So my first travel essential is actually two items, but I'm going to group them together. One, a neck pillow. I deal with a lot of chronic pain in my neck. I'm not sure what happened to it, but several years ago I started just having incredible, incredible, unbearable pain in my neck all the time. Weeks and weeks and months of physical therapy, nothing helps. Um, but I sleep with a neck pillow like this because even laying on my own pillow without extra support under my neck hurts. So this is just great, especially these ones that are kind of squishy. This one's kind of, this one's old, so it's like real squishy. But I like these better than the hard ones because this I can put here, I can fluff it the way I want it. If I need some extra support, I can fold it and give myself a little more. If I wanted to use it as a head pillow, I can. So definitely you're going to want to have some kind of comfy, squishy pillow. This is made of that, I don't even know what you call it, but it's got like the little bean bag bits inside and it's that like kind of spandex material. Spandex! All spandex! Pretty sure I got this for like $3 somewhere. Usually they have them at most places. I think this one came from CVS on clearance. The other item that goes along with that is a light little blanket. This is actually, this is a big deal for you to see this. This is my blanket that I have literally had since I was born. Ah! Um, but it's a quilt. It's not a huge blanket, um, but it's it's a quilt, so it kind of feels cool, which I prefer a blanket that feels, you know what I'm talking about, it feels a little cooler. It's got some weight to it, which is also really nice, um, and it's pretty small. It's smaller than a twin size bed. I would call it like a throw blanket size. You can see the dog got it. Um, but I definitely always have this, just if I'm a little chilly in the car, um, if I'm feeling like... I, again, I can use this as a neck pillow if I want to, if I'm just feeling like I need a, more coverage because I'm cold in the hotel room or I want something in between me and the scratchy hotel sheets. Always having 
my little blankie here <laughs> is, is a great thing to have. My next items are an ice bag, a good old fashioned ice pack. Um, I always keep ice packs in my freezer here at home. It get, I get headaches really bad and chronic migraines. Um, but this is just nice to have to take to go with you. Every hotel has an ice machine and you can just pop it right in there, fill it up, be done, be ready to rock, easy to go. And it's very small. It takes up like no space when you're traveling. And I, I, it's just really good to have. Um, it also is cheaper than buying those like ice packs that you like pop the bag. This is a cold pack. Hey, give me that. You have to break the interior bag. You can refill this. You can use it over and over again. Ice bag. Good old fashioned ice bag. Love it. Plus this one's cute. The other thing that goes along with that for that temperature control is the heating pad. Um, this one's pretty old and gross, but uh, you got to have a heating pad. I always pack a heating pad when I travel. You just never know. When I'm traveling, I go on extra adventures. I'm out. I'm hiking. I'm walking. I'm sightseeing. I'm sleeping in a bed that isn't mine. It might not be comfortable. Um, who knows if I'm going to be dealing with abdominal pain and nausea, all those things that happen when you're out of your routine and just general muscle soreness. It's always, always, always on the top of my list to bring my heating pad with me. I use it almost every day in my real life, so I'm definitely going to make sure I have it. Number three on my list of essential items to travel with, a face mask for sleeping and earplugs. You never know when you are traveling what kind of light you're going to be dealing with. A lot of times in hotels, they have those like shears and curtains that you just they don't block the light at all, and there's like a McDonald's right next door with its sign blaring into your window all night. I cannot sleep unless it's totally dark, so I need to have this guy with me. Is this the cutest? My mom got it for me. I love it. Uh, but you can get them anywhere, at Amazon or wherever else. And then I always bring earplugs for that same reason. You don't know if you're going to end up with a roommate on the trip who snores maybe or you end up with the room next to the ice machine or next to the elevator or there's a travel hockey team on your floor. <laughs> you just never know. A garbage truck is running up and down the street. I always have these with me. It works well too for sleeping in the car, sleeping on a plane. You just want to make sure that you can be in your own little bubble. Number four on my list of essentials is my essential oils. I have a very large essential oil collection. I don't bring everything with me that I own, but I do bring the ones that I know I'm going to use the most. Peppermint oil, things like lavender, headache blend, digestive blend, tea tree, um, the big ones that I use the most. I use frankincense quite a bit. Um, also, I will bring orange with me because it's a nice smelling oil and what if you end up in like a stank hotel room you just never know what's going to happen so i always bring one that's just a good smelling one motion sickness blend as well as a cold blasting blend as well as like a breathing blend for like if you get a cold something like that and then i bring my thieves blend or protect something that's an immune protective blend just because you're running into a lot of different germs and stuff when you're traveling. And one of these things that's really cool that I have, this is a mini, almost like a diffuser plate. So this is, on this side it's like um, glazed porcelain, but on this side it's not glazed. So what you do is, what do I want to smell in here? So what you would do is take your oil, and I'm going to use my sweet orange, and you just put a few drops in. Come on now. And then you let it sit, and you can see it sitting there, and it soaks in almost immediately. And that almost acts like a mini diffuser. And you can smell it. smells really, really good. Man, do I love sweet orange oil. So you just have that, and you can set it on your bedside table um, to diffuse any of your oils. You can keep it near you in the car. You can just kind of have it. And you could also, like in the car or the plane, just open it and sniff it. You can put a roller cap on one of these, but this is a really cool little item. I am not even sure where I got this. I've had it for years. If I can find something like it, I'll link it below. It's just a nice little travel, easy peasy diffuser. And then it evaporates off of there and it's good. You don't need to wash it. It'll just evaporate and be gone. It won't smell like anything. And then you can just put the next one on there. The other thing that I will typically bring with me is, oh, this isn't it. I don't have it in here with me, but it's a diffuser necklace. And it's got a little felt pad inside, and you open it up, and you drip the oils on. 
close that and then you've got a diffuser hanging around your neck. Another item that I really like, I found these tiny clothespins. I got them at probably Michael's or Dollar Tree or somewhere and they are coated with cork. They have a little strip of cork on the top of the clothespin and you could do this with a regular clothespin with no cork but I find that the cork absorbs the oil better and you just drip the oil that you want to use right into the cork and it absorbs it and makes it last longer and then you just clip it right onto your shirt or right onto your seatbelt in the car and just keep it near you and again it's a way to just diffuse on the go. Um, you can also take this and clip it onto the air vent of your car to keep those you know oils kind of moving through. So that's my kind of to-go essential oil kit that I think is really useful for traveling with a chronic illness. The next item on my list, which seems like a no-brainer because a lot of people bring books to read on vacation, is reading material. When you are dealing with a chronic illness, chances are you're going to be spending at least a full day, if not a few full days on your vacation not doing anything. I know for me, I will have to recover quite a bit just from the drive down. It's like a 14 hour drive from where we live. And just doing that, even though you're just sitting in the car, that's a lot on your body, especially I get like a little bit car sick, which is never fun. Um, and then God forbid, you know, we go on an adventure. My mom and I will be going out hiking and bird watching and doing all kinds of fun things like that. We'll be tro trooping back and forth to the beach. Swimming in the ocean is really tiring. I definitely expect my body to have a little shutdown moment when we're traveling. And when you have something nice to read, um, it just kind of makes it feel more like a luxurious relaxation exercise instead of I don't feel good and I have to lay down. You know, you'll have your phone, of course. You always bring that kind of stuff. But I like to just bring a really good book that I've been wanting to read anyways. That way, it kind of forces me to want to relax and give my body the rest that it needs. And it's it's something that's feeding me that I really want to be doing. And it's not just like, oh, I'm sick. Ugh. So bring good stuff to read. The next item on my list is a major duh, but it's your medication. Make sure that you are planning ahead. So I'm going on a trip, but it's going to be longer than the seven days that this pill box allows. So I, I definitely don't want to bring, isn't this cool? I love this. I've shown this before in my video about what I take in a day, um, but I'll link it again. So if you wanted to order one, it's really cool. Um, and these are cool too, especially for travel because they pop out. So if you're going on a day trip, um, you know, we're going going to be going to the baseball park every day, so I'll just pop this out and keep it in my little purse for the day or in my little backpack. That way I don't have to carry this whole thing. But I don't want to take every bottle of medication and supplements and things with me. That's I'd have to pack like a whole suitcase for that. So I actually have two of these. I'm going to load them both up uh, and have them ready, and that way I have one for every day that I'm going to be gone and a couple of days' worth of extras. You have to make sure that you're organized and that you've planned ahead. I have been on vacation before where I ran out of medication and had to like call my doctor and have them call the pharmacy in Alabama or wherever it was that I was. That's really, really stressful, especially if you depend on medications to be well. So make sure that you plan ahead with your meds. Something else that I always make sure that I take with me when I travel is just a basic water bottle. Um, I don't like bringing cases and cases of water, especially if you're going on a plane, that's not an option for you. And I don't like spending a ton of money on that kind of stuff when I get there. Um, most hotels have um, drinking water in the lobby or drinking fountains, ice machines, things like that. Yeah, I know that ice is probably suspect. I'm willing to take the risk. My feet were so sweaty, I can't even feel the cold. Um, if you're staying at, you know, a one-star motel, probably not. But if you're staying at nice hotels, you'll probably be okay. We're going to be staying at a beach house for this particular trip. There's a freezer. I can make ice. I can refill. This is just a basic water bottle. Um, it's by Thermos brand. I really like this one for traveling because it has a little lock, so this isn't going to pop open. And boop. And then I can just wash this every day. This little guy is a neoprene sleeve that not only keeps my drink cold, but it also absorbs the sweat from the bottle so it's not getting all over the inside of my bag. I literally don't go anywhere without one of these every day of my life, and I'll definitely have it with me when I travel. It also has a little hook on it, which is cool, because then I can just strap it to my bag. Um, really great for traveling. Always important to stay hydrated. Make sure you have something with you to make that easy. Speaking of being hydrated.
Thanks, water. One of the last items on my list are whatever you're going to need for temperature control. So on this particular trip, we are going on a beach vacation. So I am going to be taking sun hats to block the sun from me. I'm going to be taking my baseball cap to wear at the ballpark. I'm going to be taking my umbrella and my little beach pop-up cabana thingy for when we go to the beach. Um, I don't need to be sitting in the sun all day. I get very sick when I'm overheated. I also feel really sick when I am too cold. So when I'm going on a trip, oftentimes I go um, on conferences and things like that in the winter time, which is very cold here in Michigan. And I always make sure when I'm going on a cold weather trip that I am packing an extra blanket in the car just in case. I am packing my gloves, my hat, my scarf, extra warm socks, boots, all of the things that I'm gonna need just in case anything should happen while I'm driving, and also to keep me happy and healthy and feeling good for the trip because I don't want to spend the trip uh, recovering because my bones hurt so bad from being cold, or laying in the hotel with heat stroke uh, because I didn't properly prep myself to be out in the South Carolina sun all day. Um, something else that's really important that you make sure you bring, sunscreen, duh. Also aloe, if you do get a little too much sun, that has an almost immediate cooling effect on your skin. So make sure you pack that. And then this little guy is something that's pretty cool. It's a very, very fine mist spray bottle with a fan. So when you spray it, it kind of just lets it go. So you get the little fan and you get the little spray. I always um, keep this in the baseball bag. So this will be something that'll just keep us cool. It also helps to keep the dog cool because I bring her to a lot of our games. So this is a really neat little item. I think it's like two bucks at who knows where, Walmart, I don't know, Ace Hardware. I'm sure you can find these anywhere. Finally, the last item, I don't go on a trip without like 65 bags, but these are the essentials, remember. The last item, that is the best thing to take with is a Boss First Aid Kit. Now I'm gonna do a whole separate video on what I keep in the family first aid kit. This big guy I only take when the whole family's going on a trip. I keep smaller versions of this in my purse as well as in my toiletry bag and in my car and in my drawer at work. Um, I always have all of the meds that I might need with me, but this guy has everything that we might need for traveling with the kids, with the whole family. And I, I love you, this old caboodle. Caboodle! Thanks, 90s. Um, so this one's really cool. It's a pretty big one. And we, those are some wipes. We've got everything in here from medications, Neosporin, Band-Aids. Oh, there's extra sunscreen, cough drops, itch cream, ace bandage, gauze, nausea, headache, allergy, sinus, you name it, it's in here. Um, icy hot, I can smell that. Gosh, I hope it didn't break open. Um, hydrogen peroxide, tongues. So we make sure that we, okay, I'm just gonna leave that closed. So this is the ultimate family first aid kit. So those are my main items for survival when traveling with a chronic illness. Hopefully there was something new on the list that maybe you thought, oh, Duh, yeah, I'm gonna pack that. There's nothing life-changing here, folks. It's just the kind of things that I've learned through years of travel and not feeling good and having to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. It's just not convenient. So I hope that you learned a little something. If you have things that you would like to add to the list, please comment below. I think that would be amazing. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified of all my future uploads. Thank you so much for coming. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Keep coming back. Take care of you.